You have a couple of options when it comes to removing something distracting from your images. There's a tool in Lightroom, as well as in Photoshop, called the Remove Tool. Now, depending on the image, which program should you use? I'll go over the Remove Tool in Lightroom and Photoshop, coming up. Hi, I'm Terry Vanderheiden. Today, we're gonna to talk about the Remove Tool in your Adobe software. Now, both Lightroom and Photoshop have a Remove Tool option, and I'll go over how to use both of them throughout this video. So let's say you've taken an image and loaded it in Lightroom, and you look at it closer, and you start seeing little imperfections you'd rather not see in your image. What's the best and the fastest way to remove something that might be distracting? So let's head over into Lightroom Classic and see what it has to offer. All right, we're here in Lightroom Classic. Let's open up an image. We can see here, if we look close at this image, there's a few little distracting things that we'd maybe like to remove, like these little white blobs of, of fuzz or something that's on the water. So an easy way to do that is we go into the Develop module, and we come over here, and there's, you've got five different choices, of course. We've gone over this before. Now, if you want to learn more about Lightroom, I'll leave a link up here and down below on how to uh, learn light from, from the very beginning. But... In the center of this panel, you've got uh, healing. That's what it's called. So over here, you've got three choices. Of course, we've gone over these, but this one here is the remove tool. It kind of looks like a little eraser. And so all you have to do to utilize the remove tool is to change the size of the brush. Now I can change the size of the brush here with the bracket keys. So left bracket makes it smaller, right black bracket makes it larger. And let's go ahead and zoom this up to, uh, oh, let's go to 100%. And you can see some of the little white things we're gonna try to remove here. So this is just a matter of grabbing your tool real simply and just clicking right over, it removes it. This really couldn't be faster to start removing things that you wanna have removed. And of course, if you drag it, if you click and drag, then it makes a big section that it removes. And it uses AI to go in and replace pixels that are nearby to make it look more realistic. So this is a super way to go through, spot your image if you've got dust, if you've got things that are just really quick you wanna do. This is by far and away the fastest way to remove things in either of these programs. On an image like this, it works fantastic. So let's go ahead and try this one here. Here's another image, and let's say for instance, this big twig over here is a little distracting. So let's go ahead and make our brush a little bit larger, and we'll just click on it, drag down the length of the twig, let it go, let it do its thing, and within a couple seconds, it's gone. It really works really good. So for fast removing of things, this is really a great way to go because now you're done. You know, you've, you've removed something real quick. You're in Lightroom, you can just go on to export it or do whatever it is you're gonna do with it in your workflow. Here, there's a little aberration up the top. We're gonna go ahead and remove that, see if it'll take care of that as well. And it does real simple. Those are really great uses for the Lightroom version of the remove tool. Let's grab another image here. So here we have an image of a great blue heron in a tree, and then there's some little out of focus white, probably an egret down here. So let's go ahead and zoom up on that. And let's, actually we're gonna zoom up a little bit less. Let's try this here, there. So we've zoomed up on it. Now we take our remove tool again, just come over to the same area, grab our remove tool, and we'll just draw Make sure that our cursor lines go over the entire part of this white area, and then we let it go and let Lightroom do its thing. So it looks a little bit weird. It looks a little kind of out of focus. Let's, let's take a look here. Let's fit it back here and see. Yeah, I mean, it's not great. So let's, let, let's take a look at before and after. Yes, it's gone, but it's not great. So let's, let, let's try one more thing. Let's see if we can do it a little bit better by adding to it. So we'll just do another stroke. And that got rid of that little white area, but there's still kind of a big blob of out of focus here that, I don't know, it doesn't look that great. And if we, if we go to 100%, then it really is noticeable that something weird is going on there. So let's go back to fit and we'll reset this. And let's bring this image into Photoshop. So edit, edit in Photoshop using the latest versions of all these programs as of today. 
So that's helpful. If you're not seeing the same thing I'm seeing, you're going to want to make sure that you download the latest versions of these programs. All right, so we have this image in Photoshop. This is how I have my Photoshop set up for my classes. Now, if you're new to Photoshop and you'd like to learn more about Photoshop or learn it from the very beginning, I have a whole series of classes of how to learn Photoshop. So you can check that out. Go to my playlist and you can see it there, but I'll leave a link up here and down below. So if you want to go learn Photoshop from the very beginning, but this is a pretty simple tool. You could just bounce right in from Lightroom over into Photoshop really simply just to do this and then get out and you don't have to uh, feel like you need to learn a whole bunch of stuff in Photoshop if you don't want to. So let's zoom this up a little bit. And we'll move things around a little bit. Well, I like to, the space bar to move around my item inside, move my canvas around. So now we've got this tool here. This is our uh, remove tool. So normally, if you click on this, you're going to see the spot removal tool, but we're going to use the remove tool. And what it does has a few parameters up the top. You have the size of your brush that you can change up here if you like. Uh, but I prefer to use the same shortcut we did in Lightroom, which is... Uh, the bracket keys. So we can make it smaller by the left bracket and larger by the right bracket. So let's go ahead and, and the way this is set up is you have a couple of choices here. You can sample all layers, which is great, and you can remove after each stroke. I don't like to have this clicked, so I go and turn this off so I can remove after I'm all done setting this whole thing up. Because if you remove after one each click, every time you move something, then it's gonna, it's gonna start thinking and go through this process of trying to remove whatever it is and use AI to put those pixels back. And we don't wanna do that. That's gonna take up way too much time. So let's cancel that. And let's remove after each stroke, we're gonna turn that off because we don't want that. So let's go ahead and take our tool. And you see, instead of a little line like in Lightroom, it's a it's a big red kind of a, almost a masking look to it. So what's really cool about this is that we can define this. You wanna cover up whatever it is you're gonna remove, but you don't wanna cover up too much because then you're removing things that don't really need to be removed. And then Photoshop can use those pixels in order to rebuild what you're covering up. So one of the things I like to do is up here, you have a plus and a minus. So the minus here will allow you to then remove parts of that little mask. So what I like to do is leave it on the plus, and here's a little shortcut for you that's kind of cool. If you just hold the option key down, you'll see up the top, if you hold the option key down, then it turns into a negative, meaning we can do some subtracting. So let's move this a little smaller. We'll hold the option key down. And then we can just take away some of this stuff that's over overdone on our first pass. We don't need to take off anything more, remove anything more than what we're working with. So now, We've done that and let's go ahead and click the little checkbox because we like what we've done. Go ahead and click that. And now AI is gonna start thinking and remove it. So let's go ahead and take a look. You can see how it removed it. It did a pretty decent job of removing it. And sometimes what I like to do is I'll make even another copy I use Command-J to add a new copy or Control-J on the PC. And then I'll just do it all one more time. So let's go ahead and come this direction. And we'll click OK. And you can see that now that actually is a pretty good remove. You can't really tell that something's there. So if we go back to where we started, that's a pretty good remove of that. I think in this particular image, it was more of a benefit to use Photoshop for removing. So let's try another image. All right, we got these two ducks sitting on a log. Zoom this up, how about 67%? We'll move this around over here so we can see what we're doing. So let's say we wanna remove one of these ducks. So we grab our remove tool in Lightroom. We're back in Lightroom here. And let's make our brush a little smaller and let's just go all over. Now you can't let up on this. This is the thing with Lightroom is you don't have the ability like in Photoshop to let up on this. We can just, we got to keep going until that, that line, that outline encompasses everything you want to remove. So then we just let go, let Lightroom do some analyzing. And there we go. So you can see not a great job. It's a little blurry. 
where the duck used to be and not a super great job. So let's reset that and we'll bring this one into Photoshop. So here we are, we're gonna go ahead and make another duplicate layer just so we have it so we can compare to. And we'll grab our remove tool and let's go ahead and zoom up on this. See this pretty good, grab our remove tool. And What's nice is you can let up, you can stop, you can you don't have to keep the, the button held down on the mouse. You can just kind of just keep going around till you feel like you've caught everything. And then of course we can use the same trick we did before and that subtract things that we don't need to be there. So let's hold the option key down and we'll subtract things out of this little remove mask that Photoshop has created for us. Because we want to make it we want to show them what we want to have removed, but we really don't want to go and remove things that don't need to be removed. So I even sometimes go to the trouble of saying, okay, even in between here, I want to hold that down and remove in there. And you can see that I might've caught a little bit here. So I just let off the option key and then just click and it covers up that little part of his foot. So again, you can come in and spend as much time as you feel necessary. You know, at first I would just try it and see how it looks. And, and then if you find it's not doing a great job, then get a little more refined on your mask. So we like the way this mask looks. Let's go ahead and click the checkbox, let it do its thing. Wow, look at that. That is one pure remove. Look at that. You can't even tell that there was a duck there. That looks pretty darn good. You can see it here. Ducks there, gone, can't even tell. It rebuilt all the grasses behind it. It didn't blur any of the, the log that's in front. And that's way better than what Lightroom did on its remove. So I really like it for this image. That really, really is quite good. Let's open up another one. If you're getting some value out of this content, take a second to hit that like button. And if you wanna see more videos like this, click the subscribe button and hit the bell icon to be reminded of my next video. As always, if you have questions or suggestions about using a remove tool on either program, leave a comment in the comment section below and I'll get back to you. I read all the comments that come on these videos. If you'd like to contact me directly, feel free to use my email, terry at imagelight.com, and I'll add you to my mailing list and get back to you when I know I've got something useful for you to watch. All right, let's do one last image here. So we have this image up here that's of a woman standing next to a fence. This is gonna be a little more difficult for both these programs, I believe. So we go in the remove tool and we go ahead and run the little mask around this. Oh, look what it did to the fence. That's all jacked up. That, that doesn't look very good at all. So I'm, I'm not big on that one at all. So let's, let's undo that. Now, one of the thoughts I had when I was working with the, these tools was what if we were to go in here and tell it to do a subject mask? So we, we do the mask of that. Now let's go over and use the remove tool. Well, guess what? When you're in the masking program, you have access to all of these things here, but none of this has anything to do with remove. So you can't do retouching on a mask, at least not yet in Lightroom. So that's kind of a, a little bit of a bummer, but let's go in, we'll try this one more time. We'll just wipe over most of her, try to leave the fruit basket or the vegetable basket. We'll see how this looks. Yeah, that's even worse. You can see how the, the fence is all torqued over. It really looks bad. So let's reset that. Let's bring this into Photoshop and see how it looks in there. All right, so we have her standing against the fence. Let's go ahead and we'll make another copy there. Command J. And then we'll go ahead and cover her completely. And we'll use our option tool clean it up just a little bit and let's see what Photoshop does with this. So that's not too bad, but if you look down here, you can see where it kept part of her leg. So let's try this as a, as a possibility. Now let's use one of the tools that Photoshop has for us and that's a quick select. So let's go over here and we'll come over to 
our select subject. We'll pull down and do the most detailed result we can. We'll do select subject and watch it create a selection around her. There we go. Now what we're going to do is take our remove tool and we're just going to paint in there. So we're not painting on anything that's not um, selected all the way down here. And we don't have to go in and trim it up with the option key by subtracting anything from the math. That's exactly what we want. All right, so now we can see that we've done her completely. Now let's see what Photoshop does. We'll click this here. Let it do a little bit of work. And then we go Command D or Control D to get rid of it. And that's not bad. It looks a little better, but still, if we look at this, there's still some wonkiness going on in this fence. So I'm not really sure that's the solution there. But I'll tell you what might be a solution. So let's get rid of this, do this one more time. So again, we're gonna use our quick select and we'll go up here, make sure we're getting a nice selection. We're gonna do select subject and the subject's gonna be selected and we'll have a nice uh, selection of her you know, without doing a whole lot of work by using a pen tool or anything like that, we're just gonna go right in and make a quick selection of it. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna have Photoshop use AI to remove her. And the way to do that is a lot of times you're gonna see this contextual taskbar up here. And if you don't see it, go up to Windows, come down here and say, I wanna see my contextual tax, ta taskbar. So easy to say. So this, you can grab the little white bar and move it around if it's in your way. But what we're going to do is we're going to, we have this selection here. We're going to tell Photoshop to remove this. So let's remove person. And we'll hit generate. Let's see how it does. It's going to take a little bit. And it's going to give us some variations when it's all said and done. But let's see how Photoshop does on just using the AI process. All right. So for whatever reason, it decided it was going to put in some sort of gate. Let's take a look at the next one by clicking this little arrow here. Well, now, now we're looking, that's pretty good. That one is not bad. Let's just check the last one and see. And that one's not bad either. Look at that. If we zoom in, all of the, the vegetables are there and the fence is pretty darn good. That's not bad. So maybe in something really intricate, Photoshop might be a better way to go and use the generative fill to actually remove something and uh, uh, that might be a better way to go. So those are the two ways to work inside of Lightroom and Photoshop. Lightroom's super fast, you can get your work done really quick, but it's not really great for everything. If you have a little bit more of an extreme item that you wanna remove, then I'd go over into Photoshop. If um, that doesn't work, then you might try the generative fill in Photoshop, that way you can get rid of it completely. So those are three stages of removing something in the Adobe programs.